Far from the influences of Earth, mythical creatures have been hidden away remotely for eons of time. These hybrid creatures flee here from humans, and while some are merely abominations, others are found to possess living souls. The throne wars wage on for the very souls of the creatures discovered here. The brood, intent on enslaving them, forcing them to strip mine this small planet of its rare elements. Supernovae that the brood feed on are set to consume the sky and this little planet. Yet an unforeseen threat lurks, and something here is not as it seems, and those who come soon lose themselves. Suiel has just arrived, and she has discovered that a virus is eating up their memories. She urgently wants to warn Zack about this, while she can still remember what it is. Yet Zack isn't listening to the lying lips of a brood warrior. You must choose your path, save the creatures, or enslave them to mine this planet raw. All right, Vindicator here. Uh, I'm just going to check here because I am not used to working with one screen. I'll talk about that in a second. So anyways, uh, make sure you go to iPointMore.com, sign up for a video game test of Thunder. Uh, our uh, social media manager, uh, I think we're up around 1,000 people now, signed up. So that's fantastic to test the game. So I am the creator and producer for Thunder Throne Wars takes place right here a little place called the milky way galaxy and if you're on sun and you cruise down the Krina arm and you have a bunch of lifetimes you'll end up at the stellar jewel box nebula ngc 3603 nasa took a screenshot and uh or took a satellite photo and so we put a little planet there planet nebula's prime and uh, as we zoom into it you can see a little bit of the island there. So I actually took some of the development that we did by the team and put that there and uh, removed all the lines and stuff just to kind of show off the map. Uh, we're doing a bunch of presentations now, and that just looks a little better. But our plan is so everything's divided up, as you can see right here. So we have a meta game in our game. So winning and losing territory matters. And I didn't I'm trying to work with one monitor. It's driving me crazy. Okay, sounds a little better. And so we've got two uh, supernova suns, a blue and a red, or super suns, I guess, and a red and blue moon on our planet. And we're calling it the Bylit Star System. And uh, so Scott was working on a structure how to do this, but uh, that probably will change. And uh, we're going to be applying for the Epic Games 100 million dollar grant mega grant for both our story and our video game so we're just kind of polishing things up and getting a little closer on that and here's a list of all the publishers out there that we will you know could present to we won't present to all of these but we will pick probably the best probably starting with epic that's where it looks like things are going to happen the most so thunder rocks is our tv show we're going to be uh developing that right out of the unreal game engine and uh, so we have all 84 episodes titled and a brief description on what each is. And we have two episode pilot scripts written. And uh, this is what the seasons look like. And uh, we're, we're just getting uh, those reviewed by our script editors. And uh, then we're going to present to Amazon, Netflix, HBO. And so we've got our TV pitch Bible put together now. Five seasons of shows planned. So this is actually the first page of our TV pitch Bible. It actually doesn't go wide like this, but I just zoomed in until it went wide enough. And uh, so that is ready to go. And our two scripts for season one, the, 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 we've got two pilot scripts completely written, and then the whole five seasons planned out with an arc for each one. It's very cool. And how the characters interact, just to kind of show a little bit about the characters that are going to be involved and how they relate to one another 
And the music you hear is composed by myself. So these are all the titles of the songs and the cover. So if these were singles, these would be the single covers, just to kind of remind me to talk about that. Now, I did get my RTX 10 or 2070 Super DirectX video card and I installed it and it worked and uh, I mean I'm not overly impressed with it I, I, I'm gonna show some shots I think it is better but boy it's uh, it's it's not as great as I thought it would be although there's probably some settings to do I just have things running on the basic settings the other thing is is this video card has uh, brought me down to one monitor because I need an adapter to hook the monitor up to it so for the next couple weeks until the adapter arrives i will be struggling with one monitor that's why i was ready for that today it's like oh yeah it's all in one monitor all right so let's talk about what's happening with what steve's working on with the walking talking trees so all the check marks are done views and all that kind of stuff except number five and number nine he still has to do some various views on them but he started both of them i think he's got front and back done he just needs to do top and side something like that and then number two will be next and as you can see we have number 12 in 3d and we also have number one in 3d i'll show that in a second here so there's number 12 there is what sophia did for it and that's all rigged and animated and in the game not completely animated we can do some more now i just want to say something here because somebody in our meeting was talking about they go are those arms are those fingers are those hands what is what are all those now I just accepted this. I think Steve did a fantastic job on this. And the time to ask those questions is when I'm showing the concept art, because when we get to this stage where it's an actual model, then it's too late. So that's when you voice your opinion. So I just want to bring that up. Um, oh, I thought I did that with Sophia's name. Anyway, Sophia modeled this and I guess I missed doing that. So, and I checked all this too. Can you believe that? I missed that. Anyway, so tree 10 is done. Tree eight is done. Tree four is done. These are the views. And tree six is done. Tree 11 is done. There we go. So we have 16 playable characters in the game. This is something that uh, is in our TV pitch Bible. And I just expanded it to kind of show off some of the characters. There's just nine I'm showing here. But these are all playable characters. So Balaam, Telly, and Zach. Uh, and Zach was done. This was done by Scott Clark from DC Comics. Very famous artist. Uh, he passed away at the age of 46, I believe. And so I like to show that because nobody's really come close to the level of artistic style that he did. He also did one for Tally. But uh, anyways, we'll, we'll, uh, I, I decided to go with the newer one here. So uh, Uriel, Suiel, and Sup. So those are some characters from the TV show and are playable in the game. And then Aha, Azrael. And payment so that's all we got done so far but more are on the way so that's nine of the 16 which is pretty good and just talking about some of the locations so here's payments Sun fortress Egypt so you can see it down here on the low end so Egypt also did Azrael's Sun fortress at the top of the hill so this is all going to be one level kind of S's around up to here kind of like a backwards S and you can see in the sky see the red and blue moons and Aha's Eternal Castle, Tally's Bane Castle. So that's where you break through into the underground world. There's the Lagger Guru. So we have the voice done for him, just a little test. And I couldn't help myself. I, I put him with a didgeridoo because it just sounds so perfect for him. And this is, you're actually not gonna be able to see this, but this is what they do in India. They sit, this is a little mat down here. This is a staff in his hand, so we gotta still have to do that. And then it comes back, goes down, and then it's a, a, a bar, and he sits on it like that, and it looks like he's floating in the air. So that's what we're gonna do with that. So still no textures on anything there. We still have to develop the stand. We need some long sleeves, a robe on him to kind of cover up some of this stuff and cover up the whole uh, operation. So that's being, a de being developed right now. Enrique did the pit I'm trying to look and see what that says. Pit quests. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading it. So I've got my protective eyeglasses on. But anyways, uh, so this is a book. And when you open it up, here's what the pages are like. 
And so this is Excalibur Pit, so that's Unicorn Pegasus. And these are pits. These are below the, the map, so you don't see these. And you get this book from Quest from the Lagger Guru, and he'll teach you about the pit. And then when you push M in the pit, now this is all not working, it's all, all design stuff. Push M when you're in the pit, you're gonna see this. You'll, you'll have a little you know pointer or whatever show you where you are. And as you're walking around, you can check and see and figure out where you are. So that's what that's about. Because, you know, it's really easy to get lost under the underground levels. And I say it's a fate worse than death because there's no death in our game. You get banished to a lower level, which is these pits. Okay, so here's Forever Pit, which is the Wildcat. And the Intrepid, which I might show a little bit of today. Having a little bit of issue with the water. So we'll show some screenshots instead of doing too much down there. But uh, so here's the lagger prints that Kieran did up. So he drew this up. So this is 2.0 because we already have one in the game. But uh, some issues with the model and the rig. And so we instead of trying to re-rig the model that had issues, we're just rebuilding a new one. And so Leandra did the views. And Sophia did the actual 3D model. So this is just a stiff model. No textures yet. No rig yet. So it'll go in the game and i just wanted to show this so everybody is allowed to show off their work on their portfolio and they can just add a imu studios logo and a thunder logo they can be placed anywhere in on the image and they can be you know reduced in size or whatever and then but i just wanted to show an example of that all right so leandra earlier in the week did some lagger king and queen color choices we've already picked a for both of these and she's already developed the the orthographic views and uh, i'm not showing that today but anyways i'll show this because it's interesting all right she also did the lagger guard and this has gone out to modeling i don't have anything to show for it yet but uh, that is our lagger guard we do need that uh, for our first quest and the lagger castle by faria and she also did the views for it so we're gonna model that at, at uh, a next stage here, the Lagger Marketplace, which we've already done one part of that. The tent, which, oh, this one, we've done this one. And the Lagger Huts. And then the Dark Lagger, so last week we had a little bit of a, hey, which one do you think? And, and it was Unanimous B, so we're gonna go with B. I haven't sent any message yet to Kieran, but that's what we'll be doing, going with B. Maybe a mix, I kind of like the shoulder here, so we might mix a couple things. That might look cool to have that there. Oh, I see, he's got a piercing on that shoulder. So maybe we'll stay with that, I don't know. Anyways, I gotta think about that. I had no time this week to think about that. So there are dark laggers, so this is the dark laggers, and this is their huts. So there'll probably be a bunch of dark laggers, but just we'll start with one. And the views just to show that this stuff's all ready to be built. Just need that 3D artist to get going. Okay, so now here is the pit. Now, it's funny because I took this picture and I'm like, oh yeah, this has, I want to move this. This is a return and move it back behind. Now, I guess we could leave it out front because this is a very difficult place to, to find. It's kind of hidden. And you can see here, I've narrowed this because the wings are dropping down on the side and that's kind of how I want the little pedestal to be for growl and so his hand comes over and he pits him so that's why and then we've got a little stand which is you can't see really see in there that sheila concepted up and then um and then mike built it in 3d okay so this is real-time ray tracing and this is not so i'm gonna have to say that underground it doesn't make any difference I, I do say that the ones above ground I do like, but I think for underground, it makes no difference. All right, so this is from last week. That's from last week. That's, I can't remember. Last week. This is real-time ray tracing. Can you see a difference? That's real-time ray tracing. That's not. That's not. That's not, that's not, that's from last week. So this is our central fountain. 
And I'm noticing that the mouth is closed and the tongue is out. So we're going to have to fix that. Some fix on the animation there. Uh, John didn't do that, but I guess maybe me, he could fix it. Anyways, so there is the phoenix. So that's the phoenix statue. This is actually going to be a, a model that we rig. And it flies around in the map and is part of the Pygmy Marmoset quest. So we're just waiting for that to be done. Okay, so that's all from last week. No, sorry, this is real-time ray tracing. Okay, so the, you can see the mist does look different, although I'm on the other side. So it's hard to say. So that's real-time ray tracing. That's not, that's from last week. That's not, that's from last week. Spiders from last week, just showing the spider attacking underground. I've got them selected, so it's easy to see. All right, this is all real, and I think most of this is all real-time ray tracing now. And it is absolutely gorgeous. But uh, it's not a huge difference like I thought it was going to be. Uh, Nate put a bunch of uh, extra clouds and smoke at the top. He did a lot this week. I'm very happy with you, Nate. You're doing a fantastic job. He changed the waterfalls. Trying to figure out why the plant here is so white. But anyways. Um, Real-time ray tracing did some real funny things on the Unipig. Uh, I'm not going to show that here, but I'm going to send that to the guys. We need some textures. We need somebody to do textures on this. Those are just placeholder textures. Now that looks really cool. Oh yeah, and Nate, your water... I'll send you an image. Your water is separating at certain places. Now that looks really good. And so this is kind of to remind me to talk about shrines stage two and stage three. I'm not gonna play thrones today because we run into an error, a memory error. And there is a way to change that setting, but I haven't done that yet. And there's another calling setting that I need to change. I couldn't figure it out fast enough. I had three minutes before my stream when I got the message. So anyways, I will work on that after this stream. But if we can do stage, well, stage two is already done. But if we can finish stage three, this is actually going to grow by the character being in it. And we can place thrones from a stage three position. And that way we can do it much closer to the fortress and castle. And uh, forgo our little error. And I can start showing that in my stream again. Uh, this is the, the process of making a game. You know, you do things and then you run into little issues and then you got to work around it. Anyways, so there's the Kin Shrine, stage one. And the Kin Water Gate, kind of protecting the castle that's behind it. Getting to the castle, so there's no textures on the towers yet. And, uh, you know, still got some placeholders going on, but at least we have some things working that you're going to see a little bit more of today. Some of the rock work that I think Boyan's doing. And there's the fountain in the center. And you can see it here. And the throne room. Inside the throne room. Now, here's a question uh, for you, Henrique. Uh, I don't think these are two-sided. Because I'm looking at that, and I cannot see it. You see, I see this one, but I can't see this one. I can see this one, I can see this one, but I cannot see that one. So I think that's a two-side issue. And so this is not real-time ray tracing because I didn't have a light on here. And so I went and put a light on here because these are really dark. Oh, my throne's floating. Fun. Okay, I didn't know that. Have to fix that. Nate said yeah, I can push end and it'll go to the bottom, but that, that's not working for me, so we'll have to talk about that. A reminder for you to tell me about that, how to make them, how th to make things find the bottom like that, because I'm just guessing. All right, throne room with the energy icon on it. We've got all the special effects working consistently now. So there's the pygmy marmoset close up of them. We've got two more uh, rigged and at animation. So we should have a batch of these coming, and they all look a little unique, which is nice. And Sophia did up these Marmoset quest items. 
So we're just waiting for the nest to come, and then these are going to go into the nest. And so is this. So Leandra did this up as concept, and Sophia did it up as a 3D model. And Renee did this up. Henrique did the textures. And that's what it looks like in the game. So that, again, is with real-time ray tracing on. And so the rest of this is going to be pretty much real-time ray tracing. So I, I got the shininess out of the wood there. Nate told me how to do that. I knew how to do that, but I just... Sometimes it's just too many things on the plate. So you're going to see here that we're back behind these. So you see the shadow. And so the same thing here. So what I did is I went around to the front and you can see what the real time ray tracing, what it looks like when the light's shining on it. Again, that's the back. So it's totally dark with the shadow and then in front. So that's what's happening there. All right. So we did a lot of work, Nate and I, to the Brood Fortress. You can see I've kind of put in a little tiny bit of a, a S moat here, I added a little bit of one on the other side and kind of left it open. Um, I know Bear Isle, we kind of go all the way around. Nate is reworking this tree, so that's just a placeholder right now. But uh, there's no textures on these. This is just quick and dirty to get them in. Uh, Nate helped me do the lava flow. We, we got to get the r lava lip river flowing down. And Nate, I just wanted to say to you, I know you're like, oh, I, I got to put this in. But you know what? That's actually going to be uh, a hole and there's going to be a deep uh, pit. And the pit is uh, a maze. So if you do fall off, you don't just fall into this. You fall into a maze and then you got to walk or fly out. So that's it. And then this thing in the middle kind of pushes you because you got to go around it. And if you're not watching, it's very easy to kind of fall off of there. Anyways, that's that. So looking at some of the lava flow that we got in here. Uh, note to Henrique, we need to get this all modeled. All of these things have to become models. So we're getting away. Oh, and another note for Nate. Uh, this, these items, uh, these poles that the um, dragon heads are under, they're not producing a shadow as well. So those have to be changed. Lots of little things to do. And uh, so we're going to be doing a technical meeting with Zoran once a week. He's going to tell me when. And uh, he made a list of everything that we'll get, we can do and how it will affect and, and fix the game and how the game is running. So it's fantastic. Great to start be, start getting into the technical stuff. So there's the brood gate. 